I'm Steve Demers, co-director of the Mississippi State University Deer Lab, and I'm here today with my colleague and longtime friend Bronson Strickland, co-director, and one of our fine graduate students, Colby Henderson, to talk about some of Colby's research. And Colby's doing a really cool project where he's looking at the habitat characteristics, the vegetative structure associated with heavily used areas, and we'd probably call them bedding areas of, of adult bucks here in Mississippi, and comparing that to areas within their home range that is uh, that are unused. They're available to the buck because he lives in that area, but he's not selecting those areas to live in and to spend time in. And this is a, a kind of a, a replication of a study I did 30 years ago with my friend and colleague Bob Zaglin in the South Texas brush country. We did the exact same thing and went in and, and it was so cool to be able to walk into an area that a mature buck bedded in. It was almost a spiritual experience for me to, to look around and see this is where he hangs out. This is what he loves to spend his time in. And uh, so now 30 years later, we're here in the Mississippi deer woods and we're going to do that same thing. And Colby's going to lead us on this effort today to see where the bucks are hanging out, where they're bedding and what that looks like to a hunter that potentially would be seeing the deer, but also from the deer eye view of what the deer would see and, and what kind of uh, cover he's bedding in. So it's a, a really great opportunity to share with you the deer's eye view of his bedding area. So here we are in, the, in west central Mississippi along the Big Black River where we conducted the buck movement project. And this project was conducted on roughly 66,000 acres of private property with about 70 different landowners. This study area consisted of bottomland hardwood areas, upland hardwood areas, upland pine, agricultural crop fields, fallow fields, and food plots. Once captured, we put a GPS collar on them. We took their weight, antler measurements, and age, and then we released the deer for the GPS collars to take the locations for two years. Once we acquired these locations from the GPS collars, we then put a 50 yard by 50 yard grid within the home range of each specific deer. Then looking at these gridded areas, the areas that had the most locations of a specific buck within the home range is what we classified as used areas. And then the grids within the home range that had no locations were the unused areas. We then went to these areas and looked at the vegetation structure that was present to determine how they were different between the used and unused areas. These used areas are bedding areas that deer are staying in for quite a bit of time. So come back next week as we visit these locations so you can see where the deer are staying so when you're trying to pick somewhere to hunt, you know better what deer are selecting for. 